people of South Sudan have lived with war for decades. Sometimes it seems that they've spent their whole lives on the run because after independence from Britain and Egypt in the 50s, there was war between North and South, decades and decades of war. When they got their own state, Africa's newest nation, South Sudan, it was born in July 2011. They hoped that that would mean that at last they would have peace. They would still be poor, but at least they had their own country and they would be able to live together. But alas, what we're seeing now is that it doesn't mean that war is over because the fighting which started on Sunday, the danger is that this can escalate and now there may even be civil war within South Sudan. On Sunday, fighting erupted within the presidential guard of South Sudan in Juba, the capital. They call them the Tigers. Now, the president, Salva Kiir, he says it was a coup attempt. But I've been talking to people I know in Juba and to others as well, and they say it doesn't really seem as if it was quite like that. It seems that there was some misunderstanding or some argument between different soldiers in the presidential guard, and then fighting started and they split into two factions which began to fight each other and this has got this reflects the rivalry of the political system between president salva Kiir, he comes from an ethnic group called the dinka and the former vice president riak mashar from another ethnic group the newer the president sacked his vice president in july there's been a power struggle and now it seems that this fighting which began on sunday is reflecting this bigger division between the president and the former vice president, between the Dinkas and the Newers. And we have heard reports of Dinka soldiers going to civilians and saying to them, you know, what are you? You are Dinka, you are Newer, or speaking to them in Dinka, and if they don't know the language, then allegedly killing them. And so the great danger is that this could lead to, to fighting between different militia or for soldiers of different militia killing civilians. That's the great worry at the moment. Thousands of people appear to have fled their homes, and some are sheltering the, in the UN compound or in other compounds. And the death toll is very high. Um, the government is saying that 190 soldiers have been killed and 110 civilians. But a friend I was talking to who's been out counting the bodies, he says that there are more than that and there are areas where they haven't even been able to get into yet to see how many bodies there are. He told me of going into the hospital, of seeing 40 bodies in the morgue, and he told me about a woman, a civilian, who was crushed by a tank rolling over her. And he says that the soldiers have been using heavy weaponry, not just AK-47s, but mortars, even artillery. Well, when soldiers start to use weapons like that, lots of people get killed. At the moment, as I speak, it's calm, but the fighting has apparently spread to the, to the area around the town of Bor, which is north of Juba, and the great fear is it might spread even further. The international community has been very concerned about what's been going on in South Sudan for some time. They supported, when I'm talking about the international community, really the Americans and the British supported the independence of South Sudan, which was based on a referendum where a vast majority of South Sudanese said they wanted independence from the north, they wanted to be their own country. Huge amounts of aid goes into South Sudan. But, you know, the government has really been disappointing ever since it took power after independence in 2011. There are great allegations of corruption. They haven't been able to agree with North Sudan about how to divide up oil revenue. So they actually stopped the oil flowing for some time. They stopped the only income other than aid that the country has. It seems that they really don't care about their own people. They only care about themselves. And then there's been fighting going on between the government and, and different ethnic groups. I think the international community has looked on with some despair and what they're doing now is they're pulling their own nationals out. They are hoping that there can be some kind of mediation. Probably neighboring countries, Ethiopia and Kenya, might have more effect as mediators than, say, the British or the, or the Americans. 
but somebody needs to try and help, whether it's mediators from within South Sudan or people from outside, to try and get the two key people, President Salva Kiir, former Vice President Riek Machar, to talk to each other and for other key leaders to sit down and talk, try and stave off the worst, stop South Sudan from going back to war.